everyone. Welcome to our Good Friday service. This is a service where we get to pause, where we can mark the moment and intentionally shift our attention away from what every day looks like for us and onto Jesus, onto the price that he paid, onto what Good Friday was like, the very first one. And so let's share in this song that sings of the humility of Christ, that sings of his willingness to come to be among us and to reconcile us to the Father. The song is called Humble.
this time we have ahead of us, we lift you high. We choose to honor you. We give glory to you in this time, and we thank you for this service to remember you. Pray these things, Jesus, in your humble name. Amen. Thank you, Odalis. I appreciate that. I'm glad we were able to open and worship together. I want to welcome all of you to um, our time together here as we mark the moment of Good Friday. Uh, obviously, there's a couple of things we want to be aware of, one of which is this. It wasn't the way we planned it. It wasn't. None of us had envisioned that this would happen. And just the fact that we're not able to be at mission together makes it feel very different. On top of that, we're all walking through a very unique time, which in some ways, in my mind, makes it even more meaningful what we're doing. Yes, as we sit with the suffering and the pain and the loss and the darkness of what Jesus endured for us, it also speaks, I think, to where some of us are at as we're trying to make our way through this season that in a way is making its way through us. We often talk about the value of focusing on the blessings. And one of the blessings that we should be focusing on right now is because we live in such a time, we're able actually to do this together, to share this online together in this moment, on this Good Friday. It's such a blessing. I'm so thankful to be able to be joined with you, all of us, digitally connected, connected in spirit, in this very moment, being able to share and to, in, in, in a sense, rejoice in the love and the goodness of God. Oftentimes people say to me, why is it called Good Friday? It's part of the church calendar. It's Good Friday. It's always two days before Easter. But like, why? You know, Easter being on the third day. But why Good Friday? I mean, how is it good? Didn't Jesus suffer? Didn't he, he die? Didn't he get utterly broken and humiliated? Wasn't he a bloody mess? Wasn't he sacrificed? I mean, how can that be good? How can you call something that bad good? Why is it Good Friday? Why are you even, how can you even talk about it being something that could even be put together like that? The cross and the pain and the suffering and the loss with good. And again, it's part of the mystery, isn't it? The sacredness of this moment reminding us that in every bad, in every place, in every darkness, the light shines and the Lord is with us right there. But it is good for many reasons, one of which is that it reminds us of, and I never forget this part of it, every time I celebrate or remember Good Friday, whenever I remember Jesus on Good Friday, I always remind myself it, it's, it's a reminder of His love, the love of God, that He would allow Himself to have this happen, to be humiliated, to be crushed, to be broken for me, for us, for our sins. That love, that love gave everything, everything, and it was loyal to the end. I remember what Jesus said, having loved them, having loved them, he loved them to the end, it was said of Jesus. He loved them to the end. That's the loyal love of God that goes all the way. And it reminds me not to quit when things are hard. That the example we're given, the model we're given, the, the way of Jesus is a way that doesn't quit when things are hard. It trusts God even in the forsaken place, even when Jesus was forsaken by the Father. And He was, He was forsaken by the Father so that you and I would never be forsaken. Think about that. He, his very dying and giving of himself secured the possibility of the Lord's presence in, the way, in a way that was never before possible. Therefore, it is no exaggeration to say that because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, that, and, and, and that is an expression of God for us, what he did for us is an expression of God for us. But because of that, we never have to have him not with us. He is able to be with us in a way that was never before possible because of the cross and what followed in the resurrection. So when we sit with this, and when we're going to do it together, we have readings planned and interactive prayer points. 
And again, if you haven't had a chance, take a, take a moment. You'll be able to follow along digitally um, on the screen or through the handout, either one that works. And if you haven't already, if you have a chance, try to get yourself some bread, a cup, and, and maybe a little bit of, of wine or juice and just pour it in there together in some way because we're going to take communion together as well. But at the center of this is the suffering of Jesus. And it's good for us to sit with it and not run past the cross. Good Friday always focuses on the cross. And it's in the cross that we will find life and are invited, yes, to die, to die to ourselves, to die to our will, our willfulness, to lay aside, to lay before him, to lay at his feet, our willfulness, our pride, and listen, our shame. For there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And so as we do this together, I want to invite us to to go with wherever the Lord wants to take us. If for some of us, this is meant to be a strength for what we're all walking through in this unique time where we're having to change our way of life, at least for a while because of the virus and all that we're trying to do to protect everyone, just working together. Maybe some of us really need to be able to sit with the suffering of the Lord and remember how much he understands our feelings and our fears and our, our pain and our an anxiousness, right? There's nothing that the Lord doesn't understand. He knows what it's like to be lonely. Some of us have been battling loneliness at a profound level that very few others would understand because if we have someone else, it's, it's hard to relate. And then again, some of us might be battling just our own things as we have to spend a lot of time thinking about things and we're afraid and the Lord knows that and it's okay. Maybe that's what we're supposed to bring to the foot of the cross. That's the other thing I want to say is along the way, we're invited to bring things and lay them at his feet. So maybe by the time we get to communion, we've had a chance to both acknowledge what he's done for us and at the same time, be okay with giving some things to him, especially when we get to the communion time. And the final song, which is the maker of the universe, that just sings to us the melody of God's love, the, the expanse of it. But for now, I want us to get ready to share this time. There's a rhythm to what we're doing. After I pray, I'm just going to go ahead again, and you can access it in whatever way is easier for you. But I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then afterwards, I'll begin the reading. And as I do the reading, there'll be the parts where I'll invite everybody to pray together and it becomes a collective prayer. Again, we are praying digitally together. We're connected together. Now, in theory, you could even read with me. And if you prefer to do that, that's okay as well. Typically, there's a rhythm. I read and we pray. I read and we pray. And we make our way like we were almost having a kind of moment standing at different spots pondering the extent of God's love, almost like a, like the stations of the cross, a version of it anyway. So you're, you're okay. You can do whatever you want, but, but the, the game plan, the way that we're going to approach it is going to be that I'm going to read and then we'll pray together. I'm going to read and we pray together and we'll just, we'll do this in rhythm. All right. So here I go. This is called the way of the cross. Some of you know how it works. Some of you here, this is your first time doing it. Give it your best shot. Again, it's about the authenticity of our heart and we're just sitting with the cross on this Good Friday. Jesus is condemned to death. That's where we begin. His accusers brought many false charges against Jesus, but he spoke not a word in his own defense. Crucify him, they shouted. Pilate did not dare to side publicly with Jesus. He washed his hands to show the decision was not his own and to appease the people. So Jesus was condemned to death together. Lord, when you were misunderstood, you silently forgave, but we so often respond in anger. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you gave us the opportunity to choose Jesus, but often we too have chosen the rebellion that demanded your death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus was scourged. The whips cut his back until it was shredded and covered in blood. A crown of thorns was pressed upon his head in mockery. Then they returned his robe to him, 
and they brought him to the cross on which he was to die. Jesus embraced the cross, resting it painfully on the open, raw wounds on his back together. Lord, you were scourged and you were wounded. You deserve no punishment, but you were punished in our place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus had willingly embraced the cross, but his physical body was weak from lack of sleep, from the pressures of arrest and trial, and from torture and beating. He had said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And now his body faltered, and he fell to his knees together. Lord, you embraced and shouldered your cross, but your body was weak. Ah, your body still is weak. Your people shrink from the weight of suffering in our weakness. Lord, let us pray. Your will be done. Your will be done. Jesus, you were first a carpenter. Build in us into what you desire and secure every joint tightly that we may hold together. Plain the rough surfaces of our relationships. We are your workmanship. Your will be done. Your will be done. Jesus, you said yes to the Father's will, and only your physically exhausted body faltered. May we, your body, not falter, but follow you in your obedience, saying, Your will be done. Your will be done. This is from John 19. So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe, and they said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. And Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. And Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man! And therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And the leaders and the people answered, they answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then they delivered him to them to be crucified. And then they took Jesus and they led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others, one on either side and Jesus in the center. This is from Psalm 22. And this has to do with a prophecy that was given about Messiah. It's amazing. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd. My tongue clings to my jaws and you have brought me to the dust of death for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them and my clothing. For my clothing, they cast lots. The reading, the journey was at an end and Jesus was quickly thrown backward with his shoulders against the wood. The soldier felt for the depression of the front of the wrist. He drove a heavy, square, wrought iron nail through the wrist and deep into the wood. Quickly, he moved to the other side and repeated the action, being careful not to pull the arms too tightly. And then the title, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, was nailed into place and the crossbar lifted into position. The left foot was pressed backward against the right foot with both feet extended, toes down. A nail was driven through the arch of each, leaving the knees moderately flexed. The victim was now crucified. Jesus of Nazareth, the suffering Messiah, he is our peace. Together we pray, Jesus, our sins put the nails in your hands. It was love that held you there. It was love that held you there. Jesus, our sin put the nails in your feet, but it was love that held you there. It was love that held you there. The soldiers hoisted your cross on high. You were their prisoner, but no one took your life from you. You gave it willingly, freely. It was love that held you there. It was love that held you there. You were lifted high upon that cross, even as you had prophesied when you promised, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to me. And it was love that held you there. It was love that held you there. And as 
Jesus slowly sagged down with more weight on the nails in the wrists, excruciating, fiery pain shot through his body as he pushed himself upward to avoid this stretching torment. He placed his full weight on the nail through his feet, and again there was searing agony as the nail tore through the nerves as the arms fatigued great waves of cramps swept over the muscles, knotting them in deep, relentless, throbbing pain. Jesus fought to raise himself in order to get even one short breath. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do to the thief dying at his side today. You will be with me in paradise to his mother woman. Behold your son and John, behold your mother. In the words of the psalm for telling the death of Messiah, he cried, My God, why have you forsaken me? Together we pray, Father God. You waited through the long hours of agony when he was robbed even of the sense of your love, your presence. When the sin and disease and hatred and darkness overwhelmed him so greatly, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was wounded for my transgressions. Father, what love is this of his? What love is this of yours that is dying? Love reflects your forgiveness for me as we gaze upon his sacrificial death is a truly undeserved deserve gift as the pardon he spoke to the dying thief. It is mine if I will only receive. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was wounded for my transgressions. Jesus could now feel the chill of death creeping through his tissues. And with a loud voice, he cried, it is finished. His mission of atonement had been completed. Finally, he could allow his body to die with one last surge of strength. He once again pressed his torn feet against the nail, straightened his legs, took a deeper breath and uttered his seventh, his last cry. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Not soon after the soldier pierced a long spear into the side of, of the dead man. The friends of Jesus were allowed to remove his holy, but now lifeless and broken body. See from his, together, see from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so rich a crown? It was for me, it was for me. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. It was for me. It was for me. It was for us. His love. He gave it all. So as we get ready to then move into this final time of our sharing this moment together to remember the love of Jesus on this Good Friday 2020 that none of us could have seen coming. We're going to take a quick little break and we're going to sit with a worship point together that reminds us of his love, his brokenness and of his glory and of his goodness. And as we do that, we're going to get ourselves ready. And I just, I would like all of us to get ourselves ready to share in a communion moment. Then after that communion moment, we'll, we'll, we'll share the Lord's prayer and then we'll have the final song that we, we share together our cornerstone moment that has bound us together for these decades. The song that Phil will sing and that we will, we will engage that reminds us so much of Jesus' love and the majesty and the meekness of such a wonderful Savior. So here we go. Let's share this time of worship. We come back together and we'll share a communion. Love's 
the glory and the grace. All right. I'd love for us to be able to take this moment, not a long time, but take this moment to share in communion together on this Good Friday, 2020. If we can, wherever we are, and whatever way we can do this, let's do this together. But I'd love for us to take the bread and the cup. We have bread. Let's hold it together and let's, uh, let's, let's engage this moment. Bread, of course, the reminder of the brokenness of the body of Jesus. And it reminds us of his love, the love of God. He said to us on the night of his betrayal, this, take the bread for this is my body broken for you. And often when I take this and it's kind of become a reminder for me, but every time I take the bread, I say, Lord, out of your brokenness, I am given wholeness. Out of your brokenness, we are given wholeness. And the wholeness not only has to do with the promise of life to come and the wholeness that we have in terms of our standing before God, but also I embrace the promise of his wholeness for me. And I would love for you to do that as well, wherever we are in our spirit, in our soul, in our body that we would open ourselves up to the wholeness of God. It reminds us that the Lord is the healer and that in the brokenness of his flesh, the very brokenness of his being, the very brokenness of his body, the love of God pours out for you and me. And so I pray this. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the bread. I thank you for what it reminds us of. Your very body broken for us. The cross, yes, and the love that held you there. We welcome you into any broken place 
Maybe at this time, there are more than a few things that feel broken and out of sorts. Maybe some of that brokenness is in our very mind, our thoughts. Some of us have been struggling greatly with fear. We're still struggling with it. The anxiety, the anxiousness of this time. Perhaps some of us feel impatient about how things are going. Or maybe we're very afraid. Or perhaps we feel lonely. Perhaps we feel lonely. And it is possible even to be around people we care for and still be lonely and afraid. But it's also possible that we have been feeling lonely and forsaken. And perhaps even alone in the darkness of our thoughts. We welcome you into this place, Lord. You who were forsaken, we welcome you. You are faithful. You who were forsaken by the Father for us are now with us forever, forever faithful. I will never leave you nor forsake you, is what you said. And I thank you, Lord, that you are with us. And when we take this bread, we remember that you are with us. So we take this bread now together, church and friends, and we say, thank you, Lord, for you are with us. And the cup, if you can get your cup. In my cup is the red, the red wine, the fruit of the vine, a reminder of the Savior's love. He said, when you take the cup, remember, it's my blood poured out for you. My blood poured out for you on the cross. On the cross, my blood poured out for you. There is nothing, no sin, no separating grievance, anything that can stop us. No, nothing, no demon from hell, not even death itself, hell itself cannot. The power of the blood of Christ to break through anything, nothing more power than the very life flow of Jesus. In the end, it would be declared all that was needed. Everything that had been anticipated since the very first human family was clothed with an animal skin, the shedding of blood, in a sense, began there when they in their shame had to walk away from the presence of God, temporarily covered through the sacrificial system, reminding again of what the blood could do, the blood of a lamb and the Passover itself when Israel was set free from the bondage of Egypt with the mighty hand of God, but the blood of the lambs, the lamb, blood of the lamb upon the doorposts. Even now, Jesus, the ultimate lamb, the one who John said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That was the opening Welcome and acknowledgement. Behold, the Lamb of God, the fulfillment, the one who would give himself, the one whose blood would be shed once and for all to do for us forever what could only be done temporarily. All the sins of the past pushed ahead by the blood of a bull and of a goat, as it were, and the Lamb. But the anticipation was fulfilled in Christ. We take this, and even now I pray, Lord, and you pray with me, Lord, there's any sin, any point of shame, we have them. Any separating grievance or any area of lawlessness in our own heart, willfulness or pride, we lay them at the feet of the cross and we receive the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Christ over our lives. And we accept the victory of the cross. We accept that you are our Savior and we love you. And we take this cup, and as we do, we say, we love you, Jesus, and we are yours. I want to read the Lord's Prayer, and I put this in there because there are different versions, and I want to read the same one. Our Father, and you pray it with me, and say it with me, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, maker of the universe.
as man for man was made a curse the claims of law which he hath made unto the uttermost he paid his holy fingers made the bow which grew the thorns that crowned his brow the nails that pierced his hands were mined in secret places he designed he made the forest whence there sprung the tree on which his body hung he died upon a cross of wood yet made the hill on which it stood Wasn't that great? Ah, the maker of the universe, that's Jesus. God became flesh and dwelt among us and gave himself for us. Ah, what a blessing it's been to be able to share on this Good Friday together. I'm so looking forward to Easter. I'm looking forward to our joining together in the different way, in the way that we didn't envision. And I want to remind everybody to sow, water, and reap. Make sure you spread the good news. Invite as many people as you can, friends, family, neighbor, wherever they may be, from very far. It doesn't matter because in this way, we can all be together. In fact, distance is relevant in some ways right now, which is great. You, whatever you know, social groups that you're connected to, networks you have, spread the good news. Invite as many people. Let them know. Let's tune in together. We're going to have an amazing time. We're going to be blessed together. We're going to rejoice together in the Lord. But for now, we thank we thank the Lord for the opportunity we've had to just sit with the cross. And may his cross be at the center of our lives. Let me go ahead and pray. I'll bless you. Bless all, our, all of our time here together. But Lord, we thank you for the time we've shared. How beautiful, how special, how wonderful, how lovely, how good it is for us to dwell together in unity. We surrender to your cross. And we thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great rest of your day, and don't forget, so good, so God, so good, so God. Yes.